Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In the series of algorithm analysis, next we are going to analyze the selection sort algorithm. If you want to know what is selection sort algorithm, how does it work, how to write a program for it, everything has been discussed in the previous video. The link is available in the description box and also in the side button. Go and watch that video. Now, this is the program for selection sort algorithm. With this program, we'll see how to find out the time complexity of best, worst and average cases and also we'll see how to find out its space complexity. So try to watch this video till the end. Before that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then do subscribe and also hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. Now you may have a question why I'm taking this selection sort program for analysis instead of counting the number of comparisons or number of swaps. In that way, you'll get a lot of confusions in your mind that why number of comparisons are only considered and why number of swaps are not considered, right? So to avoid those kind of confusions, I'm going to take this program for analysis. As we discussed in the introduction part of DAA, priori analysis has an assumption that every statement takes one unit of time for each execution and every variable takes one unit of memory. So to find the time complexity of any problem or any program, our main goal should be finding the time unit for each statement. Here in this program, we have declaration statement, comparison statement and swap statement. Here we don't need to consider this update statement because it will be executed only when the condition is true. Otherwise, it will not be executed. But this comparison statement will be executed on each iteration of this inner loop. So it's very obvious that this comparison statement will be executed more number of times than this update statement. And that's why we are not going to consider this update statement. Now, what is the time unit for this declaration statement? See here, this declaration statement is present inside this outer loop, but outside this inner loop. So, the statement will be executed only on each iteration of outer loop which will run from 0 to less than n minus 1. That is the outer loop will run n minus 1 times. So, the time unit for this statement is n minus 1. Similarly, this swap statement is also present inside this outer loop but outside this inner loop. So, the time unit for this statement is also n minus 1. Now, what is the time unit for this comparison statement? See, this comparison statement is present inside this inner loop. So, we have to find out the total number of iterations because comparison statement will be executed on each iteration, right? For simplicity purpose, let's take n as 6 and for this outer loop, i starts from 0 and then it will be incremented by 1 till i is less than n minus 1. Here n is 6, n minus 1 is 5 and the loop condition is less than 5, not less than or equal to 5. So i ranges from 0 to 4 and for each iteration of the outer loop, inner loop will run from i plus 1 to less than n. Here n is 6, less than n means 5. So when i is 0, j ranges from 1 to 5. When i is 1, j ranges from 2 to 5. When i is 2, j ranges from 3 to 5. When i is 3, j ranges from 4 to 5 and then 5 to 5. From this, we can conclude that on each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop will run 5 times and then 4 times and then 3 times and then 2 times and then 1 time. So this will give you the number of inner loop iterations on each iteration of the outer loop. Now what is the total number of iterations? Just sum up these values. It is simply sum of first n minus 1 natural numbers because here the last term is 5 but n is 6. So we can take sum of first n minus 1 natural numbers that is n into n minus 1 divided by 2. Now bring this n inside and ignore the constant values and consider only the higher order terms. 
So the time unit for this comparison statement is n squared. Now what is the total time unit? n minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus n squared. Again in priori analysis we have to ignore the constant values and consider only the higher order terms. Therefore the time complexity is order of n squared. Now what is the best, worst and average cases? The best case will occur when the input array is already sorted and the worst case will occur when the input array is completely in reverse order and for the average case the input array is neither sorted nor reversed. But whatever be the input array these two loops will run completely regardless of the elements arrangements. So in all cases the time unit for selection sort algorithm is order of n square. Now what about space complexity? As I said earlier priori analysis has an assumption that every variable takes one unit of memory. Here we have variables min index i and j. Other than this input variable n and array and each variable takes one unit of memory and the total memory unit is 3 which is constant. So the space complexity for selection sort algorithm is order of 1. And that's it. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any doubt then make use of the comment section and if you like my way of teaching then hit the like button and also show your support by subscribing to my channel.